Good evening, I'm Dennis Ward, and this is Face to Face. Our guest this week is Heather Agluliakti, an Enoch scholar, curator, and art historian from Nunatsiavut. Heather is an associate professor of Indigenous art history at Concordia University in Montreal. She's also one of the curators of Inua, the first exhibition at Kaumiak, the Winnipeg Art Gallery's new Inuit Art Centre. Heather, thanks for being with us this week on the show. Hi, thanks for having me. Uh, Kamiak, the new Inuit Art Centre at the Winnipeg Art Gallery is just about to open. Uh, it was a $65 million project. Uh, what were your thoughts when you first stepped foot in the doors? Uh, well, I first came in the building while it was under construction, so my first thought when I came in the doors was, wow, this is a big gallery. And I'm now being in it as a, as a completed space, it's pretty amazing. How does it stand up uh, against uh, other galleries that you've been to? It's actually not like any space that I think I've ever been in before, at least maybe not on this continent. It's, uh, I read a description that the floor plan here is about the size of two skating rinks, and as you can see, it's a big open space, barely any straight walls, and so it's really exciting to uh, get to move around inside, and I, I can't wait for it to open and people to get to see it. Looking forward to that myself. Uh, th there was a naming <laughs> ceremony for the new center. How important was that and, and is the name itself uh, Kalmyak? The, the naming ceremony that we had was really important. It was actually a series of conversations that we had with uh, language keepers and elders from all of the nations across Manitoba, as well as the four Inuit regions of Inuit Nunanga, which is northern Canada. And so over a series of um, Zoom conversations, because of course we couldn't meet in person, we uh, had conversations where we looked at the space and we thought about concepts that uh, went across different nations that that um, would really speak to what the building means and how we're all moving forward together and the collections that are inside. So for example, right now we're in Kilak, which means sky, and it's a big airy gallery that's kind of up in the sky. We've got 28 huge skylights that bring in outside light from into the gallery. And so uh, all of the titles and the names are really meaningful. And there is a, uh, a, a named space either inside or outside of the building for all of the peoples of Manitoba as well as for all of the Inuit and Inuvialuit regions. This uh, first ever exhibit, Inua, features, uh, as you said, four curators, including yourself. Uh, how did you come to be part of this team? So I was invited by the Winnipeg Art Gallery to curate the inaugural exhibition for In This Space, and I immediately counter-proposed that I bring on three co-curators so that uh, I'm from Nanatsiavut, and then my other co-curators are Asinayak from Nunavik, Krista uliuk Zawadzki from Nunavut and Kablusiak from the Inuvialuit region. And so together we represent all four of the Inuit regions of Inuit Nunanga. Yeah, how important was it to have the curatorial team made up from people from all four regions? Well, representation was really important to us, and when we got together, uh, that representation grew into all kinds of other concerns that we had. For example, there are artists in the exhibition who are elders, there are emerging artists who are, you know, in their early 20s, still in art school, there are mid-career and senior artists. There's also representation in terms of the kind of work that's in the show. Uh, it's a great diversity and range of different kinds of media and art practices. And then we also were really inclusive of making sure that we have young people and old people and um, LGBTQ artists included and a balance of women and men as well. So trying to really think about all the different ways that we could bring um, inclusiveness and equity to this project, I think. I've only been able to see uh, some video so far of the gallery, but uh, it's looking pretty amazing. Uh, what can you tell us, uh, what more can you tell us about Inua? 
Well, there's 91 artists in the show, and they are from not just uh, northern Canada, but also from Alaska and Greenland as well. So we're really, really thinking about how do we bring in artists from uh, the Inuit world and not necessarily thinking about the colonial borders that divide our various nations. We also um, have over 100 works in the show, and these range from, you know, I think the things that, that a lot of people in southern Canada maybe think of when they think about Inuit art, like sculptures and prints and drawings, but also we have jewelry and wearable art in the show and drone photography and uh, installation work, sound art, murals, like all kinds of different things that really speak to uh, the depth and breadth of Inuit artistic practice. Now you have a family connection to this exhibit as well. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, we all do actually as curators. We very early on decided that it was important to us to acknowledge our own ancestors and our relationships to Inuit art and art history. And so there is a caribou hide and beaded purse in the exhibition that was made by my grandmother, Susanna Egluliukti, probably before I was born, I don't know when. Um, and there are uh, dolls by Asenayuk's great aunt. There is a carved ivory tusk by Krista's great grandfather. And there are other uh, Inuvialuit dolls by Kabusiak's grandmother. And so uh, it was really important to us to start the exhibition there and say, uh, you know, we see ourselves as a part of this longer continuum and that it's not just us, but we sort of bringing our ancestors forward with us in this contemporary art exhibition. Have you ever had the chance to, to curate an exhibit that featured art from your own family? Uh, once before, actually, I did a major exhibition that toured across Canada um, between 2016 and 2020, Saki Ayuk, and I included my uh, grandmother's work as well as my brother's work. He's a painter that teaches at Emily Carr University, and it's, it's pretty amazing to get to include your own family members in an exhibition and to really honor those connections that uh, I think as Inuit, we're not a big population. We're, you know, maybe 70,000 people in Canada today, and so you think about this collection's got 14,000 works. I think there's a lot of Inuit who have relatives that are in this building and so I think it's really exciting that we can uh, acknowledge that we have so many uh, close kinships and relationships and then also to think about um, how artists are going to be here in the future as well. Uh, Heather, more to talk about uh, this exhibit and this gallery. We've just got to step aside for a quick break and then we'll continue the conversation here on Face to Face. We just had our first tour inside the building and it's incredibly exciting to see how it is all coming together. You can really get a sense of the spaces. I'm Dr. Heather Gluliukti. I am one of the curators on the curatorial team for the inaugural exhibition of the Inuit Art Center, Inua. There is going to be space here to look at Inuit art from uh, the Inuvialuit region straight through to Nazjavut, from Alaska straight through to Greenland. You know, we're really trying to get away from the borders that divide us and to think about us as a people. And I think that's really exciting. This is going to be a place for artists to uh, show new works, to be experimental, to create, to uh, engage with other artists in exciting and dynamic new ways. We don't want to just show new work with the Inuit Art Center. We also want to think about new ways to show Inuit artwork and new audiences to engage in Inuit art. Welcome back to Face to Face. Our guest this week is Heather Agluliukti. Heather, uh, what are some of the things you're most excited about uh, with this new Inuit Art Center? Um, one of the things that I'm most excited about is to see what happens here in the future. I'm so thrilled for people to finally get in and view the inaugural exhibitions and visit the visible vault and, and see everything here, but I'm, I'm really excited to see what Inuit and Inuvialuit and a global Inuit do when they get to come in this space and see what an amazing place it would be to exhibit. I think that it's going to inspire a lot of new art. What do you think it means for Inuit to have a center like this now? 
I think it is a, I think it's really lovely that we have this space here where we can share and meet and gather and, and create new art historical research. And I hope that it also means that we start building new relationships and renewing and expanding on the relationships that the Winnipeg Art Gallery already has to communities all over the North as well. I guess what do you hope people from the South and really around the world uh, take away from this exhibit and this center? What I'm really hoping is that, or what we're really hoping as a curatorial team, is that people who maybe think about Inuit art in one way, that it's, you know, that really important history of sculptures and prints and drawings and um, wall hangings and other practices, we really want them to come and see that Inuit art is anything made by an Inuk and that it can be anything and it is lots of different things. The exhibition includes, uh, you know, wearable art. There's a sealskin spacesuit. There's a uh, mixed media found object motorcycle sidecar. <laughs> There's all kinds of different things in the exhibition, and uh, it really just speaks to the innovation and creativity of Inuit artists. I think. Um, so this is a, a question that comes up often. But what are your thoughts on the largest collection of Inuit art being located in Winnipeg? You know, I'm not just a curator at this exhibition. I'm also the lead of the Indigenous Advisory Circle. I co-chair it with my colleague, Dr. Julie Nagum, and there's a lot of really amazing people, uh, First Nations and Métis people from all over Manitoba on that committee. And so we started having that conversation around what does it mean for an Inuit Arts Centre to be here in Winnipeg, the homeland of the Métis Nation and Treaty 1, when, uh, you know, instead of having it in Inuit Nuranga somewhere, like having it put here because of the collection. And it was really important to us that we talk to people who work all throughout arts and culture in the city and to bring in elders and to build that relationship before we uh, even before the ground was even broken for the opening of the museum we've been we're so grateful to uh, the the indigenous peoples of this land who are hosting this institution here uh, Heather, you know, this, as you mentioned, this, some of this is contemporary art, some of it's older, wearable. Uh, people might want to sit on some of it, but uh, especially for some of the older stuff, uh, what protections are in place for this? What do you mean by protections? Do you mean like conservation for the works or how exactly, they're installed? Yeah, yeah like conservation. Yeah, I, I think. Um, so the Government of Nunavut collection is on long-term loan to the Winnipeg Art Gallery right now. It is a collection of thousands of works that are being having conservation done to the works right now, as well as being catalogued and digitized. And then all that, of that work is going to go back to Nunavut. And so I think it's great that the Winnipeg Art Gallery has the kind of expertise and the equipment and the uh, digitization technology in order to take care of that collection now and to make sure that it goes home in the near future. What type of exposure do you think this will all bring for artists, not just this exhibit, but uh, the gallery and all the exhibits to come? I think that the feedback so far has been really overwhelmingly positive. I'm seeing a lot of, this anecdotal of course, but you know, Inuit on my Facebook <laughs> seem to be really excited about the exhibition opening. I think a lot of people are excited to see something opening in, in 2021. <laughs> you know, it's, mm -hmm. uh, the, this world has been kind of closed down and I wish that we were having a big virtual, op a big in-person opening. Of course, we're having a big virtual opening instead. Um, so I, I'm really just very excited for people to finally get in the building and see the work because you can't really get the sense of the scale and um, importance and significance of the building itself and how beautiful it is in here until you get to visit a person. So what my wish for this year is really that people get to come in and be in the space with us. Uh, Heather, has it been a, a bit of a bummer for yourself and for those who have worked on this for so long to have it uh, first delayed in the opening, but now the opening happening during a, a global pandemic? I mean, yes, we were hoping for the big blockbuster opening. We wanted lots of Inuit to be here in the building. We wanted all the artists to be here with us. And so that part has been disappointing for sure. But we also, I think we've been fortunate in that we've had a long time to plan and think forward. We knew that we weren't going to be able to have this live um, in-person opening for months now. So instead, we've made a big effort to plan for how we're going to virtually engage people who are not in Winnipeg so that they can also 
also um, experience the exhibition. And so we've got panels and artist talks and workshops and programming for youth, storytelling and all kinds of stuff planned over the course of the next year. And then we also have a virtual exhibition that people will be able to uh, move through the space online and get to get up close with the artworks and watch the videos and listen to the sound. So we're doing what we can to make this as interactive and as meaningful as possible for everybody. Thankfully, Manitoba is going to uh, now be allowed to have, you know, some people in the facilities and stuff. But uh, the, the yeah. museum is promising to uh, connect audiences from around the world. Uh, you were kind of touching on those, but uh, how can people connect with uh, the art gallery and check some of this stuff out? Everything is on wag.ca. You'll see Kamayuk in the sidebar, and uh, from there you'll be able to go on and register for the events, register to come into the building in person if you're local or if you can make it here to Winnipeg. Um, and then all of the opening events and everything throughout the year is going to be online. Uh, still looking forward to seeing it myself in person. Hopefully you can get over there. Uh, Heather, we're just going to step aside for one more quick break, and then we'll continue the conversation here on Face to Face. Welcome back to Face to Face. Our guest this week is Heather Agluliokti. And Heather, you're an art historian, an indigenous art historian, which does sound like a pretty wicked job. Can you uh, tell us a little bit about what that entails? Yeah, I'm a professor at Concordia University where I teach Indigenous art history and I focus on Inuit and circumpolar work, but I also look at the history of Indigenous peoples and museums and galleries like this one and others. Uh, in Inuit art has long been celebrated in Canada, but not so much the artists behind it. Why is that? I think that Inuit art has a long history in Canada and also internationally. Inuit art um, was for a long time used as like diplomatic gifts or exhibitions would tour around the world, especially in the post-Cold War era. Inuit art exhibitions were uh, very popular internationally. And I think that this exhibition and others like it that have happened across Canada in the last couple of decades that have been curated by Inuit and have Inuit who are working behind the scenes to create and tell our stories from our own perspective are really shifting the way that um, Inuit art history has been written and formed until now and how exhibitions have been made. As a historian, do you think a center like this will go a, a bit of a ways in changing that? Yeah, I hope that we are contributing here to a new and exciting uh, new practice in uh, the writing and curating of Inuit art and Inuit art history because uh, there's a lot of ground that hasn't been covered because our voices have not been included until very recently. You're a celebrated artist yourself. Your work is in the Senate, among other places. How did you come to be part of the art world? You know, I, I actually, I did an undergraduate degree at the Nova Scotia College of Art and Design in painting and drawing, and uh, I, the, it's a long story, but basically I got in a car accident after I'd finished my degree and uh, was unable to lift my left arm to paint and therefore could not, um, didn't know when I'd be able to paint again or keep going on my practice. And so I went on the internet when the internet was new, that was probably 2005, and I looked for um, programs where I could study Inuit art history. And I thought, I'll just do this for a little while until I get a chance to go back into painting. And then when I started studying Inuit art, Inuit art history, I realized that there was so much work to be done and that there was so many fascinating things that we could, uh, that we 
could be expanded upon and so I really sort of moved into another trajectory so you call me an artist but I think of myself as an artist in a in a kind of previous form maybe I'll maybe I'll get back there someday but uh, recently I've been really focused on writing and researching about it except I will say that during the pandemic I have taken up beadwork in a real way <laughs> so <laughs> I've been doing that a lot lately <laughs> yeah I think everybody's uh, but I think that's like a lot of people <laughs> uh, you yeah, know exactly. we mentioned some of your other family members uh, is art something, I guess, that uh, runs in the family? I think art is something that runs in most Inuit and probably most indigenous people's families. You know, my grandmother, like I said, was a really famous seamstress. Uh, my uncle makes ulus. My aunt is, likes to sew and she made dolls and so on when I was a kid. Uh, my brother is a painter. My other brother is a photographer. And then my other brother is a chef. <laughs> and so I think that creativity and having to be resourceful with what you have around you and to make beautiful things that you have in your home, I think that's something that a lot of Indigenous peoples can relate to. Sounds like the makings for good holidays right there. <laughs> uh, Heather, we yeah, uh, absolutely. appreciate you coming on the show and talking to us about this, uh, looking really forward to visiting in person, if not online. Hopefully everybody gets a chance to take the virtual tours if they can't make it in themselves. Thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me. This was great. Well, that is all the time we have for this week. You can catch up on any episodes you may have missed by visiting our website, aptnnews.ca, and you can find this and every other episode of Face to Face as a podcast. You can find those at aptnnews.ca slash face to face podcast. I'm Dennis Ward. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great night. We'll see you back here next week.